Hey everyone, my name is Matt Wellens and welcome to Orwell, a game about data, data mining, and privacy in general. So, Orwell is a new government security program and we're going to be its first human employee. We'll be helping security forces investigate crimes to protect the citizens. But how exactly do we do this? Well, the Orwell program grants us access to information on every single citizen in this nation. So we'll be protecting them by breaching their privacy to find out details about their lives that they never agreed to disclose to anybody. Supposedly, whatever information we supply to our partners will have dire consequences. Um, I've played a couple of minutes already just to see what the game is about, and I think it's interesting enough to make me at least want to finish the demo, so that's why we're here. I think this game brings attention to some topics that I feel like a lot of people these days might not necessarily care too much about, namely privacy. And I really really think that this is a topic that people should pay more attention to. So we're gonna see what the consequences of not caring about your privacy is gonna be like in this game. This is episode 1 of Orwell, which is a tutorial level pretty much, and there's gonna be 5 episodes in total, one releasing each week. So episode 2, no, episode 1 came out on October 20th, and episode 2 is going to come out on the 27th. What we're gonna be looking at today, episode 1, is actually a free demo, so if you'd like to try it out yourself, check out the links in the description below. And without further ado, let's see what Orwell is all about. Welcome! You've been accepted into Orwell. Please create a profile. Yeah. Congratulations, you've been selected for the Orwell test phase. Please create a profile. I am Wellens. Oh. Oh. So there's all sorts of different photos here. And I feel like I'm not really in any of these, but if I had to pick, I guess I would just pick this person. Sure. Did you know? You're one of 771 accepted applicants. You may now enter your email address. I've actually already entered my email when I tried the game out earlier, so I'm gonna skip this step. Be diligent. Your work has severe impact. Please agree to the following terms. I am aware that my actions may severely impact the lives and citizens of the nation. <laughs> How ominous! And with a name like Orwell too, oh my god. I will work thoroughly and judge objectively in the best of my belief. While working, I will adhere to the laws and jurisdiction of the nation. Sh uh, sure. I'm not sure about this last one. I feel like we might be stepping on some toes later. Thank you for ensuring the safety of the nation's people. Your registration is now complete. That's right. Remember, our job is to keep people safe. That's my job. We're looking at this plaza by the way of security cameras. Normal day so far. <laughs> April 12th, 2017. Might be a date to keep in mind. Oh! This person has a security record. A police record. Bombing. And that's the backdrop of episode 1. The clocks were striking 13. Not sure what that means, by the way. Symes says, You're online. Good. Call me Symes. I'll be your advisor on Orwell. Together, we will form both the first and last line of defense against terrorism. For this test phase, 
You're one of the first people to try out the Orwell system under real circumstances, selected from thousands of applicants from across the globe. Normally, congratulations would be in order, but as you can see from that footage, there has been an incident, so let's get started. I've activated the reader tool for you. Its purpose is storing bookmarks to online websites and documents for easy access and to highlight when there is new information to be investigated. First, I want you to be informed of the situation. Our leading newspaper, The National Beholder, will bring you up to speed. Yup, so let's go to the reader. The National Beholder. Fast, precise, honest, or so they say. Feel free to browse the National Beholder. I've activated the profiler. Open the unknown person file once you're done. Okay. Ooh, it's a good day to fall in love. <laughs> Bomb obliterates Freedom Memorial and kills three. So that's what we saw in the security footage. Let's open this. The explosion obliterated the Freedom Memorial in Bonton, leaving nothing but rubble behind. Bonton. At approximately 7.50 p.m. on Wednesday, an explosive device detonated in the Freedom Plaza in Bonton. According to official police reports, three people were killed and at least five bystanders were severely wounded. The Freedom Memorial was nearly destroyed. Police forces closed off the area immediately. Experts believe the attack was an act of terrorism, with the police confirming that the explosive device was homemade and triggered from a short distance away using a cell phone signal. Police reports also confirmed that several hours earlier, an anonymous letter containing the first three stanzas of the German folk song, Die Gedanken sind frei, uh, <laughs> the thoughts are free, had reached local authorities. Prime Minister Blaine immediately issued a public press statement, firmly condemning the assault, and put the nation on high alert until the perpetrators have been brought to justice. Okay, so what do we have here? We have a news report of what we saw in the security footage, and there's been a bombing. We know that the bomb was activated remotely by a cell phone signal. And we also know that there's an anonymous letter containing German. The thoughts are free. So it seems like this might be a politically motivated thing. It's a little bit early to say, but it's good to have some leads to begin with, I guess. At the same time, we can also check out the other stuff in the newspaper. Negotiations in Triflif failed. We have a lot of fictional place names here. Violent riots are all too common in the shattered city of Triflith. Study with future. <laughs> Freaking university ad right next to the Tinder ad. Triflith. Peace negotiations with the riot-ridden Pargesian capital city. Triflith. Have been aborted without any result last night. Independent sources report that President Kazart abruptly cut off communication with opposition representatives as the latter presented tangible plan for the organization of re-elections. The news about the premature cancellation of the negotiations caused thousands of people to resume demonstrations in the capital. It has been reported that demonstrators wearing hoods threw incendiary material into shop windows and onto cars. The police struggled to keep the situation under control. Prime Minister Blaine stated his worries about the negative developments regarding the political situation of the neighboring country and has requested both sides to resume diplomatic discussions. Okay, so whatever's happening here shouldn't be associated with us because it's the next country over. Hmm, well, always good to keep it in the back of your head, I guess. Movie shooting completed 100 Grey Shadows for Valentine's Day 2018. Rhubarb Productions. <laughs> Shooting of the Grey Shadows Saga has finalized, third part of the saga to hit movie theaters next Valentine's Day. Eagerly awaited romantic drama, A Hundred Grey Shadows. Announced via his timeline's profile yesterday. Oh, by the way, the director's name, it's Alan Smithy in Japanese, and Alan Smithy is a pseudoism that directors use when they don't want to be associated with the film they made. <laughs> The brash director said he was eager to begin post-production in the final editing stages. The third and final chapter in the Grey Shadow saga, previous releases being A Grey Shadow and Another Grey Shadow. <laughs> Gee, I wonder what movie that is. 
was announced to be released almost four years ago, but postponed numerous times. Fans have speculated that this was due to the breakdown of the Hollywood power couple, <laughs> who had quarrels during the filming. Well, good for you! Good for you, you're done your filming! <laughs> 100 Grey Shadows, god. Alright, so that is... Have we seen all this? Yep. That's all the stuff we find in the newspaper. Now we have to open this side here, the profiler. We have an unknown person. The profiler holds all known information on those we investigate. The file you have opened is for our main suspect. The blue-haired woman that the CCTV footage shows before the assault is no stranger to the police. Take a look at the arrest record. Wa Cassandra Watergate. Yeah, so this is the person that we saw taking the bus right before the bombing happened. So it's possible that she was the one who remotely detonated the bomb. The highlighted elements in the record are pieces of data that are able to be extracted. We call these elements data chunks. Hovering over data chunks will reveal their relevance, relevance to the case and any connections or information it may influence. Drag and drop all data chunks from the police database into a profile to upload them into our servers. Yep. So from this arrest record here, we can get the picture and upload it into the Orwell system. Yep. So this is information that the security forces can see and this is, this is us doing research basically. Watergate Cassandra, good to get her name in there. She was arrested. Yep, very good. Pictures and names are crucial information for Orwell to identify a person. Information and documents can only become a data chunk when it can clearly be assigned to a target person. Add the reason for Ms. Watergate's prior arrest that had just been unlocked. We'll need this info to progress. Yeah, so let's read this first. This uh, Cassandra person was arrested in June of 2016 for assault on a police. Suspect was arrested on site after Officer Franklin had been struck by an unknown object and became unresponsive. The protesters at the origin of the assault were forcibly moved, where the suspect was found kneeling and weeping on the group. When asked to lay on the ground with her hands behind her back, the suspect cooperated immediately. See, that's uh, I think this is a little bit telling. Someone who cooperates immediately when asked is perhaps not the kind of person that would be that would have enough courage to set off a bomb. But that's very preliminary, of course. Anyway, yeah, let's add this in. Oh, good. With the data you extracted from the police record, a new document can now be accessed. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you believe in coincidence? I do not. Find data revealing where she attacked the police officer, and you will see what I mean. Hmm. Primarily, we're just suspecting this person because we saw them at the crime scene right before the bombing happened. And she also has a previous police record. Ah, she had an article about her in the news. Woman allegedly injured a police officer two weeks ago. Remains in custody. Trial scheduled for August. Simple protester or anti-governmental terrorist? The case that keeps the media and public guessing, Cassandra Watergate, who had allegedly injured a police officer two weeks ago, is still being held in police custody. The young woman is accused of having hit the victim's head with a large brick. The incident occurred during a rampage at the Freedom Plaza as a part of a demonstration. That's what Symes means. The previous thing also took place at the same place against the newest amendments to the government's model project, the safety bill. Well, let's add this piece first. The exact location as the assault. Then she turns up right there before the explosion? Surely not a coincidence. As you know, Miss Watergate is still running around freely. We should find out why. We should also gather more background information on her. I want to know who we're really dealing with. Due to the chaotic nature of the scene, police have not yet been able to connect the crime to the accused Cassandra Watergate, who is an artist by profession. That's important to know. Oh, we got a related document. Oh yes, one who does street art by blowing memorials to pieces by any chance? 
Yeah, this guy's kind of judgmental. Great, you found another document. Before we go on, let's clarify your job and how it affects mine, shall we? You have extracted all the info I already knew about Miss Watergate. Starting now, I'm going into this case blind. The Orwell Ethical Codex dictates that investigators like yourself are the only ones allowed to access the documents of target persons. Advisors like me will only get to see the data provided by the investigators. We will then draw conclusions and request action. Your primary job is to provide information you deem important. Never give away incorrect or misleading data. You may hit disable on a data chunk you do not want to pass on to Orwell. However, some data chunks might be necessary to progress on the case. Yeah. Note that everything we've looked at so far, it's all in the public domain. Newspaper articles and stuff. Let's finish reading this. Cassandra denied the accusations completely and asked her fans to show their support. A trial has now been scheduled for mid-August. The case received nationwide attention where Catherine Delacroix, Secretary of Security, labeled the alleged perpetrator alongside the other rioters as anti-governmental terrorists. Ah, so through all this stuff, knowing that she's an artist gave us access to her portfolio on the internet. Portfolio, harboring outstanding art. Of course. Oh, can we put this picture in? Is that a more current picture? I don't know if that makes a difference. Welcome to the portfolio of Cassandra Watergate. Hi, I'm Cassie a colorful inhabitant of Wonderland right behind the rainbow. See, now this one is obviously a misleading chunk because if you drag that in there, you're telling Slimes that Cassandra lives in Wonderland. And that's uh, it's a little bit misleading, a little bit. Glad you found me. Finally found the courage to quit my dull day job, focus on my art career. Okay, that might be relevant. She quit a previous job. Hmm. Interesting. We should find out what the job was. She might say it here. And put my stuff on portfolio. Below, you'll find a handpicked selection of my latest works. You can browse through them by clicking on the arrows on the left and right side of the pictures below. See something you like? Why, of course you do. Because it's freaking awesome, isn't it? Leave a message on my Utel account, the Cassie 92 Oh, she's 24. And tell me which piece you like. I'm gonna make a fine art print and ship it right to your doorstep. Best thing? Free of charge! Now off you go and have fun! How many artists do you know give away paintings for free? She's gotta be rolling in the dough. Anyway, that's relevant. Her social media account. Good! You found a chat handle. That will allow us to overhear any conversation on that account. <laughs> the power of the big brother! The listener has now been unlocked. New conversations will appear whenever they are started. Cool, we'll look at that in a bit. Professional painting, pop art various. So she has a painting of her kitty, Kikiko. Definitely the only family I need. Hmm. Yep, that beaut is me. I was never sure about the title though. The businessman's forgotten daughter. Ooh, that's important. Her parents are businessmen. or victim of traditionalism in pink, what do you think? Yeah, so just based on the newspaper articles and her portfolio, we've gotten quite a bit of information about her already. I'm almost certain that her date of birth, her year of birth is 1992 because of that account though. <laughs> a Christmas present for my darling. This was actually meant to be a private piece, but oh well, I'd have a hard time keeping it to myself. So she's dating somebody. What? what does that say? Yep, in a relationship. Okay, so I think that's probably all we're gonna get from her portfolio so far. Yeah, I think so. Yep, so let's go ahead and see what's on her Utel account, because that's what we can do. April 7th, April 13th, today. Talking to somebody. Hey, you. Hey, Jossie. I can't seem to find my credit card. I assume you took it, right? Uh, you got me, Sherlock. 
man. They take long to type. I'm in the middle of buying all of Bonton with that platinum card I lifted from your desk. Can't stop me now. Let's take that. She stole a credit card of an unknown person? If you're able to find out who she's talking about, we could lock it for the owner. I think it's her boyfriend, isn't it? That's why he's not surprised. Well, luckily for you, I don't mind you going on a splurge as long as you pick up some wine for dinner. Wine? What does Joseph Langley, my fearless attorney and all-around badass have in mind this time? Oh, now we have a name. Probs just a business call from one of his favorite clients. Actually, yes, that is exactly what's gonna happen. Very serious business, Cassandra. I thought as much. Guess I better pick up shitloads of wine. You'll have to get this client of yours pretty buzzed to handle all that business. One bottle should be fine. She's a lightweight. Oh, whatever. I guess I shouldn't pick up some of those party pills from Big Pharma, aka my parents then? Ah, another piece of information. Oh, come on. I was only teasing. Speaking of your parents, when are you gonna tell them about us? <sighs> yeah, maybe. Gotta go now. Text you later, XOXO. Whoa! She's dating her attorney. Like this guy. Her boyfriend is her attorney. That's a little... That's a little bit... I don't know. Doesn't seem very professional of the attorney. So now we have the name. Lawyer. Joseph Langley. Yeah. Ooh. Wait, she stole the credit card of her lawyer? Really? Well, we should be able to track the credit card of this Langley down and lock it for him. Done. No, really, no need to thank me, Mr. Langley. Isn't that a bad idea? You just locked his card when he's okay with it? You now have a profile for a related person. It can be accessed via the profiler. Data chunks will only appear for targeted persons and can only be extracted into their relevant profiles. Cool. Okay, there's another piece down here. Big Pharma! Her parents are into pharmaceuticals. Yeah, pharmaceutical... No, her parents are not into pharmaceuticals. Her parents are pharmaceutical company owners. <laughs> Said that a little bit wrong there. Oh? Watergate. Pharma entrepreneurs. That does ring a bell. So now that we've got all the links from this session, we can go back and see what related documents we found. Ooh. Procedures closing. Procedure closing raises manipulation suspicions. Oh my god, that's him. That's the boyfriend. Oh my god, he's pretty old compared to her. Okay, I mean, that's a little bit. Yeah. Anyway. Investigation into the malicious injury of a police officer has been dropped due to the lack of evidence. Speculated that the accused parents manipulated the trial. Orwell informs me you just encountered conflicted data chunks. Whenever the content of two data chunks are at odds with one another, those will be shown as conflicted. When you extract one of the data chunks containing a conflict, the other will become invalid immediately. I'd highly recommend that you clarify the context of the conflict before you proceed, though this is your decision. Once the information has been parsed, there is no way to reverse your choice. Yeah, because notice, once we try to drag it in here, it says this cannot be undone, so we gotta be a little bit careful in thinking about this. Okay, let's read this first. The case that has been at the center of media attention for the past month has finally come to an end. Cassandra was acquitted of the alleged assault before the trial took place with the case being closed due to a lack of evidence. However, the case might be reopened later. The suspect's lawyer, Joseph Langley, welcomed this outcome. At no point has there ever been any valid evidence that my client was guilty, at no point at all. The revered defense attorney commented during a post-trial press gathering. The defense successfully brought video evidence depicting the incident in question, which eventually turned the tide of the proceedings. Meanwhile, the relatives of the victim expressed their disappointment on hearing the result of the lawsuit. They openly voiced their concerns that the wealthy family of the accused might have influenced the outcome in her favor. The victim, a father of two young sons, 
was rushed to the hospital after the incident in mid-July, where he is still in an induced coma and responsive to treatment. Holy crap! She hit him with a brick, right? Oh my god! And she's out walking free! Okay, so the conflicting piece of evidence is, how did the case actually close? Did it close because there really was a lack of evidence? Or was it because the wealthy family of hers had something to do with it? And from an investigation standpoint, I think we should tell Symes that her family had something to do with it. Oh, now this is a severe accusation. Based on this, we could take action against her parents if we had their names. Hmm. Ah, we also have the website of Watergate Pharmaceuticals. Yep, they make drugs. Cough drops. Migraine pills. Medication. Increasing concentration. Arthritis. Antidepressants. All-round painkiller. Soothing pills for a good night's rest. Wow, they... They make a pretty diverse range. So there's nothing on this page. How about company? The name Watergate has been inseparable from progression and improvement of pharmaceutical research for more than 80 years. Watergate Pharmaceuticals is one of the nation's leading companies in the area of medicine, and at the same time is the largest medication exporter to all areas of the world. Watergate family, owning and managing the firm ever since its foundation in 1931. CEO Bruno Watergate. Grandson of our founder. He's also the founder of the Central Pharmacy Congress. This must be Cassandra's dad. Cassandra's mom, Dr. Alice Watergate. Wow, so the dad is the business person. The mom is the medical person. Co-partner, PhD in biology and chemistry, leads the research and development laboratories. Cassandra Watergate, what? Whoa, this is Cassandra. Look at the picture. Well, this is obviously the newer picture. We can upload this one, but it's obviously wrong because this is the older picture. We just saw her yesterday with the blue hair. Junior COO. So that's her old job. Appointed to be COO of a pharmaceutical company, probably by one of her parents? Being an artist and a junior COO seems quite at odd. She also mentioned she had quit a dull job, didn't she? Yeah, so she quit being a COO. Carrying the family tradition to the next generation, Alice and Bruno's daughter Cassandra. Yeah, that's a, that's a big piece of information. We'll soon be joining the executive ranks. Her business acumen and unique flair will write the next chapter of our 85 year strong legacy. But she quit. She quit because her dad didn't seem to be paying attention to her or something. Ah, now I see. Keeping it a family affair. Now we know her parents. We can begin investigating the corruption allegations. Good work. All right.